Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So obviously OpenAI has announced another update for Dolly 3, their upcoming generative AI image generator or text to image generator that's powered by ChatGPT. Uh, and fortunately, uh, no one can use it yet, but there are a few people on Twitter who do have access and are sort of teasing what it's capable of. And in order to show its capability, you know, I was curious what it might look like. It's what, curious to know if you know, maybe it can do things that Midjourney can do, or maybe if Stable Diffusion is still better at certain things. However, um, Logan GPT is here to answer whether or not that is the case. And he made this awesome tweet earlier today, which is, send me your Dolly 3 prompts and I'll post the results in this thread. So tons of people have commented um, prompts, all kinds of prompts, boring prompts, prompts for coloring books, prompts for products, prompts for wild, uh, trippy, psychedelic images. And uh, a lot of them have come up and I'm going to scroll through a few that I think are pretty telling for the capabilities of Dolly 3, what it can do, what it maybe struggles with, and what it absolutely excels at um, relative to mid-journey and stable diffusion. So let's get into it. This was posted this morning and it already has over 500 comments in the thread and about 250,000 people have seen this. So let's jump into a few of these. So this one seems kind of simple, but what I think this shows is how good Dolly 3 is at really amazing zero-shot productions. And obviously Midjourney has been trying to probably do this more than Stable Diffusion, since Stable Diffusion excels at fine-tuning and being hyper-specific, and Midjourney pretty much at this point just tries to make images that look pretty close to the prompt, but mostly that humans just like looking at. And the key here is the prompt, a giant ladybug looking disapprovingly at a mini elephant was provided. And um, yeah, what's cool is zero-shot, this is what came up, and uh, this would be easily passable in, you know, 2016 as a political cartoon, and it's perfect. It's a massive, angry-looking ladybug that's red. Ladybugs are red, and it's looking at this tiny little elephant. And uh, there's even kind of this, like, emote line here above the elephant's head, so you can tell it's thinking and that it's mad. Uh, and the shadow is almost perfect. Um, it wasn't provided a much of a sense of what the style should be. We know the style probably wasn't an artist that's living. But, um, but yeah, so pretty cool. Zero Shot is incredible right out of the bat. Um, now, this is one I thought was quite cool, just because it shows how culturally aware um, ChatGPT and Dolly 3 are. So a, a big factor of Dolly 3 relative to a lot of these other models is that it's mostly powered by ChatGPT, mostly because... Um, in order to create the best image and understand what the user wants, you have to understand language. And in theory, ChatGPT understands language better than a lot of other models, at least generally speaking. So Atomigachi is a pretty weird cultural quirk, um, especially if you grew up in the 90s. And yeah, so this is, a, again, a very short prompt. So the spirit of Atomigachi wandering in the city of Vienna. And this is what we got. So we have this very European... Um, scene of Vienna with people kind of blurring through kind of a long exposure kind of a look. And we have a Tomagachi with uh, sort of this weird en energy emanating from it, from a pretty look-provoking sky right there. And that's, in theory, what we got in the first one to three generations. I don't, I don't think Logan was clicking through a bunch of these um, before he was posting. Here we have um, some hippies on top of a 1960 Beetle van with uh, watching the Northern Lights. And what's cool is um, the Beetle van doesn't actually exist, but it understands it's a Volkswagen. Um, the Volkswagen Beetle is a car, and they're under this kind of really cool uh, Northern Lights scene. And it's cohesive. One thing I think is interesting is it seems like there's some kind of refiner step in this model that prevents, or at least like removes and airbrushes over aberrations. Because um, even things that are like illustrated or things that have um, more context than you think this model would like to be provided, there are not weird aberrations, even with text. Like, obviously, the license plate here looks a little bit weird, but all in all, this is really pretty impressive. Now, this is one especially that I like. So the prompt is a little bit longer, but, uh, you know, we have some keywords here, like cinematic. So a cinematic shot of a tiger and a young zookeeper stargazing on a boat in the middle of nowhere during the night when a whale made up of stars swims nearby. Now, there are a few things I want to call out here. So first off, the, the prompt itself is quite complex. And, you know, the key here is, you know, the, the boy in the boat with the, with the tiger is pretty straightforward, right? Um, and then we have this island, you know, we sort of have this encompassing view here. It's cinematic in that it's framed in a specific way. However, what's really impressive is we get this big celestial scene here and most importantly, when we look at the part of the prompt that is 
during the night when a whale made up of stars swims nearby. So this is a really hard thing for machines to understand, right? Because we don't know if yeah. the scene is in the ocean and we're seeing a whale made up of stars, but not necessarily in the sky. And it nails it because we have a whale made of stars and it is touching the water. So its fin is in here and it is in the sky. And what's really cool is the entire thing is reflective and sort of ray traced in a way that you'd think you'd see in like a GPU or a blender rendering. And it works on both sides. So we have, you know, one proportional to the, uh, the island on this side, another big reflection over here. So it feels very cohesive. Of course, the boat and the tiger are reflecting um, nearly perfectly. But what's crazy is we have this, you know, the, the water is kind of rippled like it's calm at night. And we can see the entire whale reflect it. And we actually get more perspective of the whale reflecting back up since, um, you know, obviously if you were looking at this from sort of a forward perspective, you'd be seeing less. So this was one that really jumped out to me. And of course the tiger looks incredible. So there are a number of other ones that use text and obviously text was something that was pretty hard to do up until some of the more late, some of the more recent um, stability AI uh, updates. So even before SDXL, um, clearly Dolly 3 really, really excels at this, right? Um, What's also curious here is you can tell that the speech bubbles were generated because here it says two onions talking to each other with speech bubbles above them. The first onion asks a question, this, which the second onion responds with a pun. So they didn't, they didn't even provide what this text was. It just said, make up a pun um, from a dumb conversation between two onions. And, uh, you know, cl clearly there's a certain amount of uh, inference going on here because most AIs that didn't have this capability would be thinking, oh, well, onions don't talk, so like, why, why would you even go about this, right? So the capability for sort of like political cartoons and those kinds of things, I think is quite novel. And it's something we haven't seen in Stable Diffusion. You know, Stable Diffusion, it could do some of those steps. Midjourney could do some of these steps. But to see sort of an all-encompassing solution here, um, it tracks with a lot of other products that ChatGPT and OpenAI have tried to make. Uh, which is they're not making this necessarily like the most specialized tool, but they're making a tool that's the most good at the most things. And um, the mixture of experts model, I think. So here is uh, a particularly tough one. Uh, this is actually written by ChatGPT 3.5. Um, so this says, a group of squirrels engaged in a heated debate over the best strategy to outsmart a cleverly placed nut dispenser resembling a miniature United Nations assembly. One squirrel passionately argues for diplomacy, another for acorn taxes, and the third forming alliances with rival chipmunks, uh, all while wearing comically tiny suits and gesticulating wildly. Now, what's interesting here is a lot of times um, ChatGPT actually won't answer political things. And here it seemed totally fine with it. So we have sort of this Oval Office look and uh, we have a bunch of squirrels. Um, now, there are some screw ups, though, because see, like, where is this tail coming from here? Okay, this is just showing up from the front and that's... Some of these squirrels don't have tails. There's another one here where this squirrel appears to have a nut for a nose and an extra eye. Uh, but the perspective here is good. You know, there's another squirrel down here where we see the ears. And all in all, this looks pretty good. Why this squirrel is so much bigger than the others, I, I don't really know. And this one here, it absolutely nails the uh, United Nations bit. This looks much, much more like a sort of political cartoon. And you can tell that the, uh, the text starts to fall apart a little bit as well as the coherency of some of these chipmunks. Uh, this chipmunk appears to have a beak coming out of his head. But, uh, but yeah, you can roughly see here like taxes and acorns and taxes and acorns and then whoever this uh, chipmunk in the middle is here taking votes. So yeah, so clearly like that was a wildly complex one and it was a prompt generated from GPT 3.5, which is kind of cool, uh, just in general. But let's see here. So the next one here is um, adventurous, preparing to go through orange glowing magical portal in a great desert of realistic, in a great desert, uh, depth of field, realistic isometric. So more of a kind of abbreviated forced prompt. And again, we get something really, really cool. Uh, you know, we have the desert here. Um, there is depth of field because most of the scene is uh, very close up and still in focus. And uh, yeah, just as captivating as something made by Midjourney. We have this sort of orange energy portal that's uh, starting to open up here at sunset. Um, so the scene is set in a pretty convincing, um, thought-provoking sort of way that 
it looks, looks engaging to your eyes, which is kind of cool. Okay, this is a cool one. So, a hackathon set in a forest with teams of humans, animals, plants, and IoT sensor tech visible and working in collaboration. Now, for ChatGPT to understand what this looks like, you know, it's clearly a bit of a miss. You know, this appears that it thinks uh, IoT is when you uh, nail smartphones to, uh, to trees and sometimes birds and then connect them with wires. But, um, yeah, I mean, we have the woodland creatures. We have, you know, kind of a, a corpo Facebook looking team here. Uh, you know, people in suits. Uh, a lot of the, the, the subjects look quite similar, which is sort of interesting. But, uh, you know, we have a lot of nice wires and smartphones between these trees. And uh, the coherency is, you know, they're, they're struggling a bit. Like, you know, from a distance, this looks like a bird here. But close up, you can tell, you know, for instance, this bird here doesn't actually have a head. So that's a little bit um, striking. Uh, there's something that looks like a, a small robot over here, but uh, interesting enough, nonetheless. Now, this is one I liked because it was actually something that the guy who submitted this said Midjourney could not actually manage to do. So this is um, a bug made of electronic components inside a computer case eating computer components with sparks and LED lights. Again, Midjourney couldn't do this, and it looks like, yeah, this totally was capable with um, Dolly 3. Uh, this looks like a lot of, you know, 90s and early 2000s movie posters or uh, like Short Circuit. This is, it's, it's very much like that kind of a theme, and it's interesting because they didn't actually dictate a theme. They just said bugs eating computer components and doing things to computers the computers probably don't want. So this is, you know... Clearly a very uh, somewhat convincing motherboard layout. I mean, like the, the PCI slots are a little, maybe not super convincing here, but uh, that's definitely a bug in a computer with sparks feeding things. And, uh, you know, that, that's a kind of a honky, really, really beefy CPU socket there, but nonetheless, fits the prompt and Midjourney couldn't do it and clearly this one could. So, definitely cool. It's a turtle with some mushrooms on his back. The celestial stuff, similar to a lot of the the um, kind of painting and impressionist stuff that Dolly can do, again, work really well. Like whales in space are for some reason very, very popular. Um, the 80s synthwave stuff is also popular, but it's been done so much, I don't think it's really that interesting. This is 747. Now, zero shot posters are pretty cool. And this is something that I think a ton of people are doing to sell on Etsy and other e-commerce platforms, or even to start printing t-shirts and things. So this prompt was um, a vintage travel poster of a kind hacker typing in a corner office tower. The scene is captivatingly atmospheric with a simple yet impactful design. Vibrant accent colors, blue and purple, zen. And of course the biggest key factor here is pixel art. And zero shot uh, got everything included there. You know, clearly we're in a high rise. They're, we're so high up there clouds and you can see the stars even. And uh, this is just really cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go try that prompt, prompt as soon as this is actually available, but that's awesome. Interesting, okay, a horse with a water bottle on his back when he's drinking the water. It's just sort of a, a pun. Um, granted, this is a curious challenge, like this guy said, because it says, um, a friend gave me one, and most AIs struggle with it. A horse drinking water from a water bottle. So, curiously, um, a bit of a miss, but the, the image is coherent at least, and it is still a horse drinking water, except the water bottle is as big of the horse filling a uh, kind of this wooden bucket. And, uh, you know, we have to wonder what's really going on here. Here's another one, a, uh, a chill looking banana swimming in a huge glass tank surrounded by a shark saying, hello world. And this doesn't really have a lot of coherency. It's just throwing a lot of really random entropy at this model. And I would still say it pretty much nailed it. We have a lot of sharks. Uh, there's sort of bars around this very vulnerable looking banana and he's underwater yet still sitting on something that's floating on a wooden platform and I guess this shark here has managed to get, well both these sharks have actually managed to get through the bars but um, yeah, I mean he does look pretty chill, he's uh, hanging out relative to a, a huge field of sharks around him and he's saying hello world in a speech bubble. So again, uh, the AI is pretty much you know, done what the user wanted, even if it's a little bit less uh, cohesive. 
Here's uh, a futuristic cityscape. Here's a cool one, okay. So side view of AT, AT Walker. Now that's a really hard thing to parse. So I know this seems dumb, right? Like everyone knows what an AT, AT is if you've watched Star Wars, but for an AI to understand what an AT dash AT Walker is, is kind of hard. Um, continuous assembly line, black and white picture, high resolution, 19th century, authentic industrial photography. So this is actually quite hard to parse. So we have, we know it's a continuous assembly line in black and white um, of AT, AT Walkers. And uh, curiously, it nailed it. So it, this, it's not just a Star Wars thing. Clearly, it still looks like one of these 1900, like, you know, Titanic looking factories. And we still have, you know, this full factory floor. And, you know, all these people who clearly appear to just be laborers on some kind of assembly line. We have the assembly line tracks, which is why it, it's continuous. And yeah, looks really good. And here's, uh, here's what um, Dolly 3 thinks a few H100s look like. Ironically, this was probably generated on a bank of A100s or H100s. This one is wildly coherent. Well, wow. it's a 2D illustration of a hyper-detailed TARS robot in a gradient of shades of purple. Blending organic and mechanical elements, the robot is surrounded by swirling interstellar features like stars and nebulae. Wow, that looks awesome. And that is super cohesive. And you, just have, you have to wonder why... Still kind of like in mid-journey, um, there are certain prompts that seem to be just more cohesive out of the box, even though they're less specific. Like there are no commas in here, this is two sentences. So it's not just like saying, I'll sprinkle in all these specific things and then have it figure it out. This is just two very well-written sentences that produce this really nice cohesive output. It's a dragon vaporizing something. Now, interestingly enough, um, Here's a website landing page that easily could be in a startup pitch deck, right? So this is a clean modern landing page for a SaaS startup that sells peanuts. And this is quite good. Like this is probably better than what most of Fiverr could even try to get you. And uh, yeah, they have like, you know, I, of course some of the text is kind of screwed up, but they say, you know, there's a modal here to get you to join. There's a sign up. Um, the overall layout is here. Like, this is something you'd normally have to pay a designer for. Obviously, it's not perfect. And um, obviously, some, oh, there's some words here that just aren't even English. But in terms of brand identity and just brand awareness and awareness of what people like to look at and click at, that's where I think uh, you know, just another area where a lot of these models could kind of excel in terms of speeding up workflows or not having to wait for people to do things before you actually say, like, here's a rough idea of what I want. Um, so obviously, this isn't going to make a website for you. But in terms of giving someone a better idea of what they might want, this is a really great option. And uh, the last one I want to go over here is um, a small angry man on top of a sandcastle holding an American flag. This is still good. I mean, that's clearly sand. It's still a small man and he has an American flag and he's angry. So, you know, we're probably just going to see more and more coming out of uh, people who already have sort of this beta access to Dolly 3. And I'm curious what you guys think. You know, is it good? Is it bad? Would you still rather just have Midjourney? Are you going to cancel your Midjourney subscription um, as soon as this comes out if you're already paying for ChatGPT? Um, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you liked our video and our content, please like and subscribe. And uh, check out our promo link for Vast AI to rent an incredibly fast NVIDIA GPU at uh, the lowest prices available on the internet. So um, thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.